We want to solve the initial value problem with the given separable differential equation. We have the differential equation y prime equals four x y minus two x with the initial condition y of zero equals eleven. All separable differential equations can be written in the form of dy dx equals a function of x times a function of y. And then we can change the form of the equation so we have a function of y times dy equals a function of x times dx. Once we have the equation in this form, we can integrate both sides of the equation to find the general solution. And then once we find the general solution, we can find the particular solution using the initial condition. Let's rewrite the given differential equation. Let's use dy dx instead of y prime. So the equation would be dy dx equals, let's also factor the right side. The greatest common factor is two x, so we'd have two x times the quantity two y minus one. Notice in this form, we do have dy dx equals a function of x times a function of y. Now let's write this in differential form, or multiply both sides by dx. So we'd have differential y equals two x times the quantity two y minus one times dx. Now remember our goal is to have a function of y times dy equals a function of x times dx. So we want the quantity two y minus one to be on the left side of the equation. So let's divide both sides of the equation by the quantity two y minus one. So let's rewrite this as one over the quantity two y minus one differential y equals, this simplifies out, so we just have two x dx on the right. So again, now we have a function of y times dy equals a function of x times dx. So now we'll integrate both sides of the equation. So we'll have the integral of one over the quantity two y minus one dy equals the integral two x dx. We need to perform u substitution on the left side where u is equal to two y minus one. So differential u is equal to two dx. So if we divide both sides by two, notice that one half du equals dx, which means, which means we can think of all of this as one half times one over u du. So the integral with respect to u would be one half natural log absolute value of u, which means in terms of y, we'd have one half times natural log absolute value of the quantity two y minus one, and then plus the constant of integration, but we'll also have a constant on the right, so let's only put the constant on the right. So on the right side, integrating with respect to x, we'd have two times x squared divided by two plus c, or just x squared, let's call it plus c sub one. Now we need to solve this for y, Let's multiply both sides of the equation by two, which would give us natural log absolute value of two y minus one equals two x squared plus two times c sub one. Let's write that product as two x squared plus c sub two, where c sub two equals two times c sub one. Now let's write the log equation as an exponential equation where natural log is base e. So as an exponential equation, we'd have e raise the power of two x squared plus c sub two equals two y minus one. Well, if we want two y minus one equals e raise the power of two x squared plus c sub two. Notice here we're adding exponents. So let's write this as a product. We would have two y minus one equals e raise the power of two x squared times e raise the power of c sub two but e raised to the power of c sub two is just some other constant, so let's let c be equal to e to the power of c sub two. So we can write the right side as just c times e raised to the power of two x squared. And now we can solve this for y and find the general solution. So the next step would be to add one to both sides, so we'd have two y equals c times e raised to the power of two x squared plus one, and for the last step, we'll divide both sides by two. So we have y equals c times e raised to the power of two x squared plus one, all divided by two. And again, this is the general solution to the differential equation. Remember, we were also given that y of zero equals 11, 
So using this, we can find the particular solution by determining the value of C. We'll substitute zero for X and 11 for Y. So that would give us the equation 11 equals C times E raised to the power of two times zero squared plus one all over two. Let's clear the fraction here by multiplying both sides by two, which would give us 22 equals, well, e to the zero is one, so on the right side we just have C plus one. Subtracting one on both sides gives us C equals 21. Now that we have the value of C, we now know the particular solution. The particular solution would be Y equals 21 times E raised to the power of two X squared plus one all divided by two. Of course, we could also write this as y equals 21 halves e raised to the power of two x squared plus one half. Either of these forms are acceptable for the particular solution. I hope you found this helpful.